Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today I'm going to do a random portrait shoot using the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II with this beautiful lens right here. So this is the Zoico 45mm f1.8 premium lens from Olympus. So normally in portrait shoot like this, I would normally use my 85mm, but this would be like equal to that in comparison to the focal length. So I'm going to be shooting with my son in this snowy, well it's not really snow, this is frost, but I'm afraid to lose this opportunity because in UK the, the weather is really unpredictable. So it might rain tomorrow and I will lose all these white bits on the ground. So I'm just going to do it and I'm going to test this out. Well not really test, it's low light so it's almost like dark right now. So I want to see what kind of photos I will get from this and let's do it. I'm really excited. So I have a props right here to add a little bit of light because this one will do a warm light so everything is kind of like blue in person so with this one right here this will create a really nice um, depth interest or element in our photos so I have this nice fairy light right here so can use this as props I'm gonna go further all the way that shoots him so I will include him entirely in the frame together with this tree well not the entire tree but like to see the surrounding so for this i have to go back a bit and my settings right now is at f1.8 i'm at shutter speed my shutter speed is 200 so it's just should let's see how it looks oh it looks so cute but it's so dark right now oh my god okay okay i'm gonna move a bit because there are some background elements in there which i don't want to have in my photos Right now, it's it's very dark, <laughs> jeez. But even though it's dark, it's still following my subject really well. So I think I'm gonna use my other light as well to really combat this darkness. I wanna see how I can pull more, if I can pull more shadows in the editing, because I think with Sony, you can do that pretty well, but I'm not sure about the Olympus. And by the way, this is my first time shooting with this lens. So it's really cool, exciting. The first 45 I've used with Olympus is the F1.2 coming from our last review. Um, I think I'm gonna add more light at the back, so fine. Okay, so I'm gonna put down my lights now and for me to make sure it doesn't fall, I have a spike at the bottom of my, <laughs> my water pot. <laughs> it's really useful. Uh, stab it down on the ground and we're all set. Now it's not gonna be falling. You want to have a look at your picture? Cool. Yeah. Oh my god, the photos are amazing! I love this pro cap mode. It really captured like all this dragon breath. Hold him dragon breath because he's smoking his mouth. And the light is adding to that effect because it's casting some light on the smoke. Or how do you call that? Smoke? Is that smoke? Or steam? Is this steam? Yes, exactly. Okay, let's do more something like that. I think it'll be better if we can have some sort of uh, the trees being lit up as well, like the branches. So I'm going to move the light a little further. I'm going to try again to do the same photo, but add a little bit more elements. And then I'm going to have to stand back a little bit more. But on the camera, as I see, the image is spot on already. So I can't wait to see my computer. <laughs> Now I'm going to do a little bit of close up but since it's dark it's just going to be a black background so to so combat that I'm going to ask Peter to breathe a little bit so it will add a little texture which is the steam coming out of his breath it's going to be amazing Now as you can see it's completely dark I only have this LED light to light us up now we're going to head home and do the editing part of this video I'm so excited now I'm back home to do the editing part of this video. Let's take a look at the images we've taken and I'm gonna do a quick edit on one of them. So let's have a look. I've actually chosen my favorite images already. So I'm gonna go ahead on the first one. With this one, I've shot this purposely to be dark. So I want it a little bit moody 
and I love the color grade already. I mean, I didn't color grade it, it's just rendered this blue color, which I love. So if I'm gonna expose it properly, so I'm gonna up the exposure a little bit, you can see that I can still pull some shadows, which is great, like you can still see some details at the back, and I'm not gonna be expecting this to have a good performance when it comes to the noise. So it's not gonna be comparable to the A74, but it's still great. You can actually fix this one with the Topaz Lab, which I'm gonna use later when I'm gonna be editing this image right here. So let's take a look at the other images. And as I've said on the video while I was shooting, that I really, really love the Pro Cup mode of this, and I'm gonna show you why I love it. It's just amazing. This is the feature just I love the most. So. With this image right here, well, I don't think it, this is the start, so I've actually shot a lot of images this time. Um, I don't remember, like, about 2,000 images. <laughs> okay, so with this one right here, I've asked my child to do a dragon breath, and this is the result. As you can see, it looks like a moving like image. Well, it looks like a video, to be honest. And the reason why I love this one is because I can precisely choose which one I would use because of the steam that's coming out of this mouth. So for example, um, I don't like this, the one from the beginning very much because there's not much steam coming out, so I need a bit more drama. So I can precisely choose which one. So I've already chosen one, as I've said. This one is what I liked the best. But you can go even further down and just really choose which one you like, which is so cool. With this one, you can see that it's a bit silhou silhouette image. So this is where you can tell that, yes, there's quite a lot of noise here already, but I did shot this at ISO 2500. But if I go on the ones where we lit up his face with the same ISO, the same settings, you can see that it's not uh, so bad. So this one we've used two LED lights, so one for the backlit, and one for his face and you can still see like details on his on his face you can see the eyelashes which is great you can see like the um the gaps on the teeth so if you know what i mean and then the the details and textures on his hat is still there which is amazing okay now we're gonna go ahead and start editing i'm gonna go on the first images i've chosen which is gonna be this one so i'm gonna reset that and we're gonna do everything in affinity photo one so i've opened this image on affinity photo one and i'm gonna do everything here i'm not gonna be editing in exposure x6 and i'm gonna show you quickly what i would normally do in this type of image so when you open the raw image it will take you to the develop persona of affinity photo so it's like the camera raw in photoshop so with this one we're just gonna do basic things so i'm gonna move the black point in the brightness a little bit, but I don't want to um, ruin the moody darkness of it. So I still want it to be a little bit dark. So I'm gonna up the clarity a bit and also do the details as well. So we want it sharp. And that's about it. I'm, I think I'm happy with this one. Let's press develop. And I can see that it's not <laughs> really leveled. So I'm gonna have to level this one. I'm very used to shooting in full frame, so I have a Sony a7 IV and Sony a7R III, and the aspect ratio on those cameras is 3 by 2 but the microphone test has 4 by 3 which I really, really love because I love to paint, and most canvases comes in those aspect ratio. So with this one, the reason why is that even though I do want to include the surrounding as well, but because my subject is mostly like taller than wider, um, you get the, you get more attention with them with this aspect ratio, which is four by three, and I just I just really love it. I really really love it. I mean, you can tell I keep saying it, you know. Okay, so I'm gonna start editing now before I keep talking so much like that. <laughs> now I finished cropping and I've already aligned this one properly. Now I'm gonna fix the noise. So the application I'm using is called the Topaz Lab Denoise. And it's really amazing because even though it's removing the noise, it's also preserving the sharpness and the details as well. 
now it's in topaz lab denoise and as you can see it retains the last settings that i did while i was editing so i'm happy with this one i'm gonna just press apply and we wait until it loads to affinity again now i fixed the noise on the image now i'm gonna clean up the image a little bit so i'm gonna remove some elements i don't like so i'm just gonna speed up that process And this one that stands out the most is this chicken wire right here. It has to go. So let's see how Affinity Photo 1 is gonna fix this. So it does this in painting tool, which is really cool. I'm just gonna like paint it there, see what happens. <laughs> it grew another tree. <laughs> but you know, it really it's really helpful, but sometimes you gotta have to like really go there precisely and just do everything manually, you know. There's no like one, one thing, one tool fix all. But yeah, as you can see, it's really cool. It makes things very easy for me. I love that, I like things. And now I've cleaned up the images. This is the part where I'm gonna do the color grading. So what I use a lot on color grading is called gradient map. This was this makes things very easy for me. So I'm gonna show you quickly how I do it. I normally just use two colors, so I'm gonna delete one of them, and I'm gonna change this to that color wheel so that's, that's easier for me. I would normally just go to like like light gray color. Okay, let's go to soft light first to see it. And then with this one, since I like it a bit moody and it is winter, so it's nice to have the color tone to be blue. So I'm gonna go like blue-ish maybe. I think I'm happy with that. And another thing that I do is that because everything else looks a little bit um, monotone, desaturated, and there's these green patches here, and I don't like that. I'm gonna remove that and just make everything as uniform as possible. And I just want my subject to stand up more and not like the rest of the colors here on the screen. So I'm gonna remove that by going to HSL and just really lower the color and I just don't like it that much. <laughs> Maybe like that. Okay, and then I'm gonna invert that, which is Control I and then use a paintbrush tool in white color and just start brushing there without dropping my pen and just brush that side. There we go. So as you can see, the most prominent color in this image is the yellow color, which is generated by slide. So what I'm gonna do is gonna make that more brighter and what I use is just a simple paintbrush tool. So I will do a empty layer that and choose paintbrush with a light yellow color like this. So a little bit lighter than that. Paint on the light, let's zoom in. This, a bit more brighter on the middle than on the outside. So basically kind of giving it a little bit of aura, you know what I'm saying? And we'll just kind of lower the opacity a bit so we can like really precisely see how much we want. So I think that one, I'm really happy with that one. We're almost at the end part of this editing. So the next one I'm gonna do is touch and burn to just accentuate some parts of my subject. So let's start doing that and I'm gonna speed up the process. Now I finished the touch and burn, let's see how it looks for another. So this is with the touch and burn and without in this. So it's just that little bit that you do that really accentuate your image even better. Now the last thing I'm gonna do is to add a little bit more color grading and I'm gonna use again my favorite tool which is the gradient map. So let's do that one really quick. I'm just gonna do two colors again. So this time I'm gonna do just a borderline teal and orange, but just a little bit teal and orange. So I'm just gonna use two colors. So I'll just use two colors and do soft light. And then let's choose um, a little bit brownish tone. And then blue on this side. Let's see, what will that give us? 
there you go very dramatic image i like it it's like out of a movie that is so cool oh my god and the 45 millimeters i i like this focal length now okay i love this lens now okay i love it okay now we're done <laughs> Now I finished the editing part of this video and what I can say is I really love this lens. I didn't expect it to perform this well, especially in a low light, a very, very low light, extremely low light. So as you can see, it's, it's so tiny, it's, it's like pocket size, also very light as well. So when it comes to field of view, this is equivalent to like 90 millimeters, so it's very close to an 85 millimeter. So what I would normally use in this type of photo shoot. And even though it's 1.8, I love the style of bokeh it gives for the reason that I'm gonna show you on this image right here particularly, because I want to retain this silhouette of the trees and you can still see the details on the branches, which gives that nice mysterious forest. And it reminds me of Harpasa, which I really, really love. And if I would be shooting with an 85 millimeter, with the same setting, this would be like obliterated in the bokeh, which won't be nice because it, because it won't add that effect that this 45 millimeter do. So if I want the 85 millimeter to have this type of effects, then I will have to step down, which means I will have to raise my ISO and that's just gonna ruin everything. So with this one right here, it's just exactly what I need. So this is the part where you give me a thumbs up and if you still haven't, subscribe to our channel so we can do more portrait shoot such as this one because this is so much fun. Okay, so don't forget to do that. And to make sure that you subscribe, subscribe, Oliviosa. Yeah. <laughs>